based on current sales trajectories. Electric cars will make up between 62 to 86 percent of global car sales by the year 2030. What does that mean for the big companies that you know and may or may not love? It means they're in some serious trouble. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'm going to say a big welcome to all our new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. If you're new, we have made, I don't know, four and a half thousand videos since we started this channel. There's normally around five or six videos posted per day. So if you want to find out the latest news, then yeah, make sure you ring that icon, notification bell, whatever it is, subscribe to the channel. Anyway, there's a clear exponential growth pattern for electric cars as rising sales track along an S-curve. S-curve defines the adoption of a new technology. Basically, when you hit 5%, well, that's when things hit the pivotal disruption zone. Led by growth of EV sales in Europe and China, and now even Southeast Asia, and driven by policy, it's going to take, well, it's taken approximately six years for us to get from 1% electric car sales to 10. Well, now we're at beyond 10. The next stage will happen much, much faster. So what is driving this adoption for car EV sales and why has acceleration suddenly blown up, which it has? I mean, we were looking at this trajectory, it's kind of going like this. All of a sudden, that is going to change for one key reason. That's why people should be very, very scared. Uh, very scared if they live in Japan or Germany. Because battery costs have enjoyed learning curves, that means total cost of ownership price parity has been reached. Sticker price parity will be reached. In other words, the price parity between electric cars and internal combustion will come most likely in 2025. In fact, technically, technically we're already there today. If you look at the decline in battery costs this year, we're down 20 to 30% on average, depending on the battery chemistry you're looking at this year. No one thought that would happen. Could it happen again? It could. But the fact is, the battery is the, well, it costs around 50% of the cost of the car, the battery pack. And seeing that fast of a decline in the cost of batteries means very likely based on today's cost, an EV can be manufactured at the same cost as an internal combustion vehicle, as long as you use the right battery chemistry. Today, lithium ion phosphate batteries, if you were to make a car using those batteries, well, yes, price parity is already here. That is scary. By 2030, EVs will dominate global car sales. And of course, the challenges will be continue to be solved. Basically, what that means is continued innovation, primarily using artificial intelligence, will see battery costs continue to fall. They'll continue to fall for at least another decade. Maybe not exactly fall every single year, but the cost will continue to fall. This means that in 2030, 62 to 86% of global car sales will be fully electric. The 62% number is probably a very pessimistic number because battery pack prices will be at least another 30% cheaper by 2030, meaning it'll be cheaper, far, far cheaper to buy an EV in 2030. So realistically, how many people will be willing to invest in internal combustion when the alternative, which is much better, is much cheaper? A new report says that a more well, pessimistic number in 2030 is a minimum of 60%. Spurred by falling battery prices, electric vehicles will hit price parity with fossil fuel models in Europe in 2024, say analysts, and the US market in 2026, and account for over two thirds by 2030. A report by the Rocky Mountain Institute, or the RMI, predicts that battery costs will halve this decade from $151 per kilowatt hour in 2022, depending on the chemistry, LFP is much cheaper than that, to between $60 to $90 per kilowatt hour, depending on the chemistry, making EVs cheaper to buy than petrol, diesel, gasoline powered cars, and of course, much cheaper to run. It's also predicted that energy prices will drop substantially as a result of the overbuilding we need to do. We basically, we need to, 
we need to overbuild on solar and wind and battery storage in order to have enough energy when there's situations where there's no sun or no wind, etc. So that's what's happening. We're overbuilding on renewables, all that excess energy will be soaked up. There's already free energy in many states, many times of the day, you can get free energy to, to charge your electric car. We've never ever been able to say the same thing about gasoline. Batteries are expensive. They account for nearly 50% of the cost to build an electric car. And that's what's made them, you know, relatively unaffordable, but all of that's changing and, and really, really quickly. This is happening at an incredible speed. Those prices are coming down as manufacturers are investing in new battery chemistries, new material sciences and software to make their EVs more efficient. Plus the battery packs are lasting longer and longer and longer thanks to new technology. According to RMI's analysis, the rapid growth of electric vehicle models in Europe and China implies that EV sales will increase at least six-fold by 2030, meaning 62 to 80% market share, 86, I should say. Some analysts even believe it could be higher than that figure. EV sales in the European Union jumped 61% in July versus the same month in 2022, accounting for nearly 14% of all vehicles sold. The European Union aims to ban the sale of fossil fuel powered vehicles in 2035. China will be doing the same thing, more or less actually coming close to banning them in 2027 when it puts new emissions regulations into play. Both the Euro 7 and of course China's version of Euro 7 will also mean it'll be very, very hard simply to sell internal combustion vehicles in 2027 that meet the new emissions rules. The United States has not yet committed to a date, except for California and Washington for ending sales of combustion models. But California and New York are both targeting 2035 to switch to selling only EVs. It's not radical whatsoever to see the continued exponential growth of electric vehicles, said RMI's bond to the media or to Reuters recently. This is what we should all expect. It's happening whether we like it or not. The change is very much here. According to RMI research, oil demand for cars peaked in 2019 and will fall by at least 1 million barrels per day every year after 2030. Research released concurrently from Exeter University's Economics of Energy Innovation and System Transition project also predicts exponential growth in EV sales. It suggests that EVs will reach a tipping point in price parity with fossil fuel models as early as 2024 in Europe, 2024 in China, 2026 in the US and 2027 in India. That's for medium sized cars, but much sooner for smaller vehicles. In fact, some of them even believe that like I said before, EV production costs are on parity for smaller vehicles today based on July's battery cost numbers falling again by an incredible 10%. Keep in mind that there is over, overbuilding of EV factories. We will have more than the world needs by 2030. In fact, we'll have significantly more than we need. Even today, battery factories in China are running at nowhere near capacity because they simply don't have enough demand. What does that mean in 2030? Well, cost competitiveness massive cost competitiveness with all these new battery factories being built in the United States. There's a whole bunch of new ones being built in Europe. There's even battery factories being built in Australia, incredibly. However, China is building them out like crazy. They want to keep this market and they're willing to undercut the competition. They'll continue to drive the prices lower. This may or not be a good thing depending on what country you're in, but it does mean one thing. EVs will be significantly cheaper to buy, meaning complete disruption of the market, meaning Germany's and Japan's automotive markets will likely be decimated. Now, of course, premium brands like BMW, Mercedes, and Audi will fare a little better because there is still that kind of perception that they are premium. And also, they're actually moving to EVs faster than the competition. For example, Mercedes-Benz have already hit 14% of all vehicle sales as electric, which is a much higher number than companies like Toyota are at 0.27. Honda, same sort of number. Mazda, almost nothing. Nissan, very, very small. You can see here how Japan in particular is in 
a lot of trouble. I actually believe the crash in Japan could be so big that it could cause a global depression. I'll have more on that over the next few months. Let me know your thoughts though, guys, in the comments. Let me know what you think about all this. I know this sounds drastic and it sounds crazy, but if you really look at the economics of Japan and its economy, it has more debt than any, com than any country in history. It has the most indebted company in history, which is Toyota. Most of Toyota's debt is bad debt. Very little of the Toyota's debt is good debt. Only 10% of that debt is actually good debt. Um, Japan's entire economy is predicated on having an automotive industry. In fact, some analysts say up to 90% of its economy relies upon the automotive industry in some way or form. If it loses that, it simply cannot afford to bail out its own automakers. And already Nissan's debt has been downgraded to junk. Automakers from Japan, their sales and percentage of sales in China is falling rapidly. It's actually quite a drastic situation. Maybe it's worth considering preparing yourself for this inevitable reality. Let me know what you think on that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.